بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا زدنا علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين امين may Allah give us the correct understanding of our deen and may Allah enable us that we are able to get his love that is our goal isn't it so that's why we are coming to this session and alhamdulillah that's a very amazing thing that we are actually coming to this session which shows that we are serious about it and may Allah make it a heavy good deed on our scales on the day of judgment that at least we were trying at least we wanted to know how to please our creator and at least we wanted to know how can we get Allah's love so that is something inshallah very beautiful so we are going to think about last week first so welcome to all the new students and welcome to all the returning ones may Allah reward each and every one of you and also your parents to, that you know they enabled you to join these sessions so last time we have talked about a concept which was ihsan right so did you try to implement it so we know what ihsan is now can anyone give me a quick definition what was ihsan quickly and when you think of ihsan is there any icon any emoji which reflects ihsan very good, Sister Hamna, to, to do everything with excellence. And is your excellence different than the excellence of another person? Yes or no? You can use the button to tell me. Exactly. So our level of excellence, it will, it will be different. It will, it will vary. Depends on who we are, where we are, and what situation we are in. It doesn't, it can't match anyone's. But what is the test of what is required from us is just to do the best in whatever situation we are in that's it and that makes life easier alhamdulillah so yes we have talked about ihsan last week and that was excellence and we tried so let me just ask you a few questions before we move on so did you try to do ihsan while eating yes or no quickly if you click on participants you're able to use the buttons if you are on zoom so click on participants Perfect. So did you try to do Ihsan food? Okay, how did you do that? Remember we talked about the etiquettes? Anyone? Okay. So maybe you were doing Ihsan with food already, but now you were doing it consciously. And because you wanted to get the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that makes it even more amazing. Because a lot of times we know all of these things and we try to implement them as well, but we don't really have the motivation. But Alhamdulillah, now we have the motivation because we know directly from the Quran that Allah loves those who do ihsan. So may Allah make us among those at every level. Ameen. Also, when you were playing or doing any sports or anything, be it arts, crafts, or any sporty thing, did you do ihsan in that? Are we required to do ihsan in even sports? Are we required to do ihsan in even our fun and play? Think about it. Yes, exactly. That is the goal. Do everything beautifully. And it's more about quality in our deen than quantity. Even if you're not able to do a lot of things in a day, but whatever you do, do it beautifully. That is ihsan. May Allah enable us to do some quality good deeds before we leave this world. Say ameen. You know how to write Amin? Okay, if it's hard for you to type, just say it out loud, inshallah. And did you try to do Ihsan in your worship? When you were praying, were you praying with full concentration? When you were making dua, was your heart there? Were you thinking about, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Were you connecting with him? Or were you just saying the words? Or was it just a lip service? That is something we need to ask ourselves, inshallah. So did you try that? Did you try Ihsan in your worship, in your salah, in your dua, in your Quran recitation? And if anything else you do, which is considered worship, did you try to do Ihsan in it? Give me a thumbs up. Okay, going once, twice, three times. Perfect, at least one person did, alhamdulillah. So, it's good that you're truthful. Then inshallah, you can try this week to, to do ihsan in your worship, right? So let's just take one step at a time. So maybe in your salah, instead of thinking about the games or the new fashion trends or what's on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat, just focus on what you are saying. 
You all know what Salah means? Like the words of Salah, when you say Allahu Akbar, what it means? You all know that? Surah Al-Fatiha, you know the meaning? So if you know the meaning, you can reflect on the meaning and it is going to make your Salah really amazing. And you will enjoy it too. And did you try to do Ihsan with people around you? Anyone? Like no matter who they were? Did you try to be nice with them? Did you try to listen to them carefully? Did you try to be respectful? Very good, very good, amazing. So that is Ihsan. No matter who that person is, it doesn't matter. We just need to show our best akhlaq, no matter who we are dealing with. Beautiful. Be it a teacher at school or someone who's selling something outside or someone who is at the gas station, just anyone random. We just have to do the best. So what can you do for, for the random people? Like, let's say if you're entering a mall or leaving somewhere, like going to the masjid or coming out of the masjid, you can hold the door open for someone, right? You can smile. You can be nice. If you notice that something's dropped on the floor and you can help that person, if there's someone elderly, you know how to do it, right? So I don't have to give you the list. You are very smart. So do Ihsan at every level and don't expect any return. That is Ihsan, right? You do more than required and you do do it and you do it beautifully. And you don't want anything in return from those people anyways, because you want the return from who? If you don't want the return from these people, you're giving any favors to then who do you want the return from? Anyone? Let's see if we can remember that part. Very good. Very good, Sr. Naima. Beautiful. Very good. Jokabed. Um, Barakallahu fikum. Yes, and Sister Safa, if that's the name. Beautiful. All right. So did you try to do Ihsan with your parents? Because it has been noticed that it is easy to do Ihsan with other people, random people, friends, school fellows, teachers, even shopkeepers, or whoever, right? Drivers, anyone random, but it's very hard to do ihsan with our parents because shaitan makes it really hard for us, isn't it? Shaitan makes us think negatively about them. Shaitan makes us think they don't understand us. They don't love us. They don't know how to deal with us. Is it true? Yes, shaitan makes it re really difficult. We can have the best manners outside, but we can show the worst manners at home. And that, and who is the culprit? Of course, shaitan. Shaitan doesn't want us to make it to Jannah because it's an easy way to Jannah to keep your parents happy, right? Just to be nice with them. And you know, sometimes you find it so difficult, like very difficult to just say one nice thing. Just remember one rule. That rule applies to everyone and also our parents. And that is give respect, to get respect that's it if you're going to respect your parents it's not possible that they are going to be mean with you trust me but you have to give respect a lot of times we do many things in order to please our parents but we don't respect them right we're rude to them and we think negatively about them and we have ill feelings for them and sometimes we think that these things are hidden in our heart and no one knows well guess what whatever's hidden it comes out right we cannot um, hide it for so long and we are sometimes too naive and we don't even know that we're not able to hide it properly and it kind of reflects here and there the way we talk the way our tone is and the way our body language is so give respect and it should not be fake respect it should be proper respect and then you will notice wonders in your life and you will get respect okay let's just see how can we get, give respect? Because, you know, it's a concept, right? Okay, how do we give respect? Do we buy it from a marketplace? Do we wrap it nicely and give it to them? What is respect? Can anyone tell me? If you want to take mic, let me know. I can just um, enable the mic for you. Did you ever try to give anyone respect? And what did you do practically to do that? Anyone? Never tried to give anyone respect? You don't even know what respect is. Okay, good, good. Look at people when they're speaking. Very nice. Exactly. So when you're talking to your parents, make sure that you're listening, right? And then you show interest as well. That yes, whatever you're saying, you know, it's very important for me because you're my parents, right? And you're my mom, you're my dad. That's why I'm listening. Very nice. Beautiful. You guys are amazing. Yes, Sister Hamna, that was beautiful. Very good, Sister Safa. Show them that they, that they matter. And if you do that, they will also show you that you matter. 
And actually you already matter so much for them, subhanAllah. So you just have to do a little bit and they will do so much for you in return. And again, we don't want any of them, anything from them and in return anyways, because we are doing it to please our creator. We, we are doing it so that Allah loves us. Exactly. So just, you know, listen to them, obey them. As long as they're not telling you to do shirk, you can obey them, right? Alhamdulillah. You learned the hard way, oh, Sister Hamna, but that's beautiful. You learned it already. So that's quite smart. So give respect to get respect. Listen carefully and talk nicely. Even if you have to disagree, you know, it's not possible that any individual in this world, you agree with that person 100%. 100%. It's not possible. It's not Jannah, all right? So it's dunya. There'll be many differences. There'll be many differences of opinions. There'll be many things you think differently and you think that is excellent and they don't think it's excellent. Yes, Sister Aisha, you can mute yourself if you want. Okay, so... Okay, so what were we saying again? So it can be as small as doing a favor for them and make, exactly. Yes, anything small. But as long as they know that we respect them and we care about them and they matter to us, that makes life very, very easy. So inshallah, try that. If it doesn't work for you, let me know. We're going to give you a few more tips, inshallah. All right. So if you were able to do Ihsan last week, when it comes to your ibadah, when it comes to your food intake or cooking or cleaning or whatever to do with food or your arts and crafts, or your studies, or with people, and no matter what you did last week, alhamdulillah, you kind of received the next level, right? So alhamdulillah, we have reached the first step, which is to get the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is by doing ihsan. So there are a lot of badges we need to collect throughout this course, all right? So you have received the first badge already, alhamdulillah, if you have tried. If you haven't, you still have got more time. Alhamdulillah, you're still alive. We can still make changes, isn't it? So inshallah, we're going to do Ihsan this week. We're going to try to do everything beautifully, no matter what it is, be it studies, even if, if you're studying only for one hour, we're going to do it. How? With full concentration, no distractions, and by giving our 100%, full focus, full time, full energy. And that will, um, you know, subhanAllah, make it very amazing for you anyways. Because of course, when you focus on something, you're going to get better understanding and you're able to retain better. So alhamdulillah for that part. But again, that's not the goal. Our goal is that we, we are studying even because we want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're studying with ihsan. We're eating with ihsan. We are worshiping Allah with ihsan. And that's how we, we're going to keep this badge for life, inshallah. Now let's move on. And our today's way to get Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love is also from the Quran and this is an ayah or part of the ayah to be exact from Surah Al Imran ayah number 76 fa inna Allah yuhibbul muttaqin so indeed Allah loves the ones who are mindful of Allah the ones who are muttaqin ever heard this term before taqwa muttaqi anyone or is it the first time for you Ever heard the term before, taqwa? Cool. No? Okay, good. We're going to understand it today. Very good. If it's first time, we're going to inshallah talk about it. Beautiful. Yeah, so there are different definitions and you can say there are different translations. So some people call taqwa fear of Allah. Some people call taqwa um, Allah consciousness, God consciousness. And, you know, if you think about all of these terms, we can try to put them all together and try to understand it with the help of one word, just to make it simpler. All of those are correct, all right? Fear of Allah is correct. Um, God consciousness, Allah consciousness is a correct translation as well. But just to keep it one easy word, and that is mindfulness, all right? So next time you, when you think of taqwa, think of mindfulness. And let's understand what mindfulness is before we go on and understand taqwa a bit more. So mindfulness is when you're able to maintain a moment by moment awareness of your thoughts, your feelings, your actions, and your surrounding environment. Okay, now think about it. So what would be mindfulness right now? That you're aware of your thoughts, that your thoughts are not going here and there. You're actually trying to focus and trying to understand how to get love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And your feelings, that how are you feeling? 
Is it like something which is helping you and your actions? What are you doing right now? Do you have any, any other app open? Are you on Instagram on the side? Or, and also your surrounding environment, like where are you sitting? Are you bothering anyone? Or are you, um, you know, are you causing any harm to anyone? Or are you in your room, safe place, not harming anyone, not bothering anyone? doing the right thing, right? So inshallah, you can use this definition to check yourself no matter where you are. This is mindfulness, right? So now let's understand taqwa by understanding this term a bit more. So mindfulness would be that before you do any action, before you do anything in life, just ask yourself one question. And that is going to make you a muttaqi. And that is the question, would Allah like this? Whatever I am about to do, would Allah agree with this, approve of this, and like this? And if the answer is yes, you do it. If the answer is no, you don't do it. Simple. Sounds simple, but hard to do, right? But inshallah, we're going to talk about some steps, how to reach there. So would Allah like this? For example, you are hungry and you have like nothing in front of you except just one hamburger. I don't know how it got there, but you know, let's say you have that. So you will ask yourself, would Allah like this if I eat it? No. So would you eat it? What's the answer? You're hungry. What would you do? You won't eat it. You will go get something halal and eat it, isn't it? Beautiful. Because you can walk and you can go get something else. It's not that you are stuck with only a burger um, in the middle of nowhere. Then maybe you have the opportunity to even have a bite so that you can survive. But that's only for the survival, not otherwise, right? Make sense? So anything you do in life, let's say you're, you're about to get dressed to go to a party, just ask yourself, would Allah like the way I'm dressed? Would Allah uh, you know, approve of this? And you will be able to give the answer to yourself that no or yes, right? Similarly, mm, you know, you're about to take some classes, some type of um, fitness classes or whatnot. And then just ask yourself, whatever that requires, that activity, is it all halal? Is it all something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala approves of? If it is the case, go ahead with it. If it's not the case, then stop. Very good question, Sister Hamna. Um, what if we make a mistake before we ask ourselves? We, we can always ask Allah to forgive us. That's it. It's that simple, alhamdulillah. As long as we are alive, as long as we realize before it's too late, alhamdulillah, we can say sorry to Allah and we can fix our ways and don't repeat it. It's literally that simple, alhamdulillah. All right, so our goal for this week would be that we are going to try to adopt taqwa in our lives. We're going to try to become muttaqeen in this world. So as we have already mentioned that it is not that easy, right? But again, it's not that hard. So let me just give you an example from a hadith because that's really, really beautiful before we move on. So there is a hadith which talks about, hadith actually, it's more like a conversation between two sahaba, two companions of the Prophet Wasallam. One of them asked the other. So one was Umar one. So he asked another sahabi and he asked him about taqwa. So Ubayi was the name of the other one, the one who explained taqwa very beautifully. So now all of you should imagine this because this is very, you can say visual, the example. So he said, have you ever taken a um, thorny path? Like, have you ever walked on a thorny path where there are a lot of thorns? Have you ever? Like, let me ask you the same question. Like, do you know what thorns are like? You know, when there are some branches, twigs, and, you know, stuff like that on the, uh, on a garden, in a garden? Right. So have you ever taken a thorny path? Umar radiallahu he replied, yes, I have. Then Ubay radiallahu anh, he asked, so how did you walk along this thorny path? Umar radiallahu anh, he replied, I rolled up my garment. So imagine you were wearing a dress and you have to pass through something, um, you know, something like that, like thorns and whatnot. Then how are you going to walk through it? You're going to roll up your dress, right? So Umar radiallahu anh, he replied the same way. He said, I rolled up my garment and I was cautious as to where I would walk or where I would put my step to avoid being pricked by the thorns. So Ubayi radiallahu anh, he said, this is taqwa. Like you live in this world. So imagine this world as thorny shrubs, right? Like it's like a thorny area. 
So how are you going to save yourself from all of these temptations, haram things and wrong things and incorrect things? You're going to do what? Protect yourself, you know, and walk through it. We cannot avoid it because we have to live in this world. We cannot say, okay, I don't like world because world is too bad and everything is so haram here. So I rather go and live on in woods or I live, I rather live in some cave. Can we do that? No, we cannot. So we have to live in this world, but we just need to protect ourselves so that we don't get tangled by these thorny bushes. Simple, right? Alhamdulillah. So example is beautiful because we understand it. Now let's understand taqwa in an, at another level. That is also from our uh, you know, tradition, this is how scholars explain taqwa. Taqwa actually means to protect oneself, all right? So now if we want to have taqwa, we're going to ask ourselves or we're going to tell ourselves this thing that I have to protect myself from everything that Allah dislikes and that will be passing the test of this life because we have to live in this world. We have to see all of this around us, but we don't need to indulge in it. We don't need to get carried away with it. We don't need to give in to all of these temptations around us, right? That is the goal. So if you want to be a person who has taqwa, how will you protect yourself? You can also do that by keep on reminding you of this. So I have to protect myself from everything that Allah dislikes, be it food, dress code, activities, you know, behavior, attitude anything right so you know it i don't have to give you the list of the wrong things right you already are smart enough you already know what's wrong and maybe your parents have told you 10 million times what's wrong what's right so inshallah now you just need to protect yourself from everything that allah dislikes cool let's move on and we should run away from sins like the way we run away from virus right so the way people are scared which is of course uh, genuine but Sadly, we are not scared of sins the way we are scared of virus. If we know people are indulged in sins, we don't mind that much. We still sit with them. If people, they are into haram things, we say, it's okay. At least I'm not doing it. Let me just sit with them. But remember, it's just like, you know, putting yourself near someone who has the virus and can easily transfer it to you and can easily transmit it to you. So run away from sins like the way we do from virus and protect yourself. Do everything with what it takes to save yourself from sins the way we do for the virus. This virus example, Alhamdulillah, makes it very easy for us to understand. So stay away from anyone or any place like that. Similarly, any sin, just stay away from it. And keep washing your hands would be, uh, in, in this case, like keep doing tawbah, like keep asking Allah for forgiveness. Keep cleaning yourself from sins, inshallah. Like if accidentally you touch something which is bad, let's say like a virus, what do you do? You wash your hands. So let's say if accidentally you slip, slip someday, you said something wrong, you did something wrong. Now, what do you do? Just wash your hands. Ask Allah for forgiveness. That's like washing your records, washing your um, you know, heart clean, inshallah, and start fresh. And taqwa, let me give you some examples. Taqwa is to not attend haram parties. I know it's hard, but what do you do? You just remind yourself of this statement that I have to protect myself from everything that Allah dislikes. So even though the party sounds amazing, even though everyone's inviting us and we are like feeling really honored that we're invited, but don't dishonor yourself by going to a place where they have some haram activities going on. And taqwa is to not eat any haram food, right? Taqwa is to stay away from any company which is into haram food also because they can easily pull you in. It's that simple. If you have friends and they have, you know, weird type of taste and they have, you know, they like wrong things or incorrect things or they are into haram, they will pull you in one day. No matter how hard you try, it's not that easy, right? So inshallah, just like virus, you know, just stay away from things like that. You don't have to uh, hurt them. You don't have to say wrong things to them. You don't have to make a statement about it. Just protect yourself, right? That's number one. That's that's our, you can say, step one. That is taqwa. And also taqwa is not to utter haram words. It's not just doing things. It's also saying things. Sometimes we say wrong things. And haram things can be, 
you know, bad language, um, swear words, dirty words, dirty language, bad stuff. And at the same time, it may not be very bad stuff, but it can be um, to ruin someone's reputation. So may, maybe we are using really flowery words, but, it, but we're using them in order to defame someone. We're using them in order to harm someone, or we are taunting someone, or we are being very harsh. So we are not using swear words, but we are very harsh with our tone, with our words. So this is also haram. This is also wrong. Very good. Alhamdulillah. That's uh, Sister Hamna's comment is beautiful. That is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy on us. That if, but if you have good friends who don't push you into anything wrong, Alhamdulillah, that's a blessing of Allah. And that is something you should cherish. And you should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for such amazing friends. May Allah grant all of us such amazing friends. Ameen. All right. So we're talking about haram words. So backbiting would be haram words. What do you guys think about lying? Is lying okay once in a while? Just to tell your parents that, you know, I was studying, but actually I wasn't studying. Or just to tell your teacher that, you know, um, my dog ate the homework while I don't even have a dog. Is it okay sometimes, you know, just to save my face, just to save myself, just to save my reputation, just to save me some hassle? No, it's not okay. Because lying actually is a major sin. Remember that. So that is also a haram word. If you tell someone something which never happened, that's like making up stuff. Yeah, any lie is a lie. White, brown, black, any lie is a lie. Something which never happened, you don't say it. That's it. Okay, very good question. If you lie to be polite, uh, like saying someone looks nice while thinking otherwise. So isn't it hypocritical? What do you think? What do you guys think? Like if someone tells you that you look beautiful, but they don't really mean it, would you like that comment? Would you want it for yourself? Would you want fake praise? No, right? So just put yourself in that situation and just think about it. That if I don't want people to, you know, just lie on my face that I look good and I'm smart or I am this or I am that, I don't want to do that to others either, right? So that is also a lie and that is also a sin. So may Allah protect us. So you don't have to say anything, right? Okay, if they say, do I look nice? Then you can mention other qualities of that person. That, oh, your dress look, looks nice. Maybe she doesn't look nice, but her dress does, right? So you can say your dress looks nice. Or, you know, you can easily distract her, but don't lie, right? Or you can say, uh, or you can say something else. Like, oh, look at that. Oh, that looks amazing. You can just distract her, but don't lie, okay? Inshallah. I know it's hard, but we have to do it. Maybe sometimes they will get, you know, mad at you. That, oh, why are you think, saying that? But at least Allah is not mad at you, right? So at least Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not angry at you. That's something which matters. People don't really matter. So we have to be truthful. But of course, you don't tell them on, the, on their face because you cannot be harsh either. You cannot say, oh, you look really ugly. Oh, you look disgusting. You don't say that. Remember that, right? So you just say, um, yes, yeah, Sister Naima, just when the situation is really bad, right? And that's just to save, uh, no, the halakha is not over, Brother Umar. We are still trying to do something, right? I hope you can hear us. Okay, so let's just focus on this. Like day to day, people lie like anything. Like some people say, oh, I'm wearing this and they're not. Some people say, oh, I bought this um, dress from that and that, you know, so-and-so designer and they, they did not. Sometimes they say, I am only 10 years old and maybe they are 12. Or sometimes they say, I'm 18, and they're, they're not even 18, they're like 16. So all of these are lies. So lies about age, lies about grades, lies about, um, you know, yeah, praising people. Okay, Brother Umar cannot hear anything. So can anyone please type right here? Then we all can hear. Please enable your headphones or whatnot. So you guys know better what to do in order to hear. So please help Brother Umar here. All right. Okay, Alhamdulillah, thank you so much. So taqwa is not to utter haram words and try that this, this week, don't lie. Don't say anything which did not happen. No lies whatsoever about anything. Okay, beautiful. And taqwa is to not have bad friends. We have talked about friends before, but you know, sometimes, um, you know, 
those bad friends are actually the cool people in the school, right? The cool uh, friends um, in college or university. So what do you do? Well, save yourself. Even though you want to hang out with them and it is hard for you, but you are going to make the sacrifice. Why? So that you save yourself from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment. And you save yourself from future embarrassments because if your friends are bad, they will lead you to destruction even in this world. So it's going to be bad for you. They're not going to let you study well. They won't let you have good life. They won't let you have your own say. They will literally overpower you. There are many cases when our friends overpower us so much that we're not even able to do, you know, little things on our own. Like we all, we all try to just keep pleasing them. Okay, maybe they like this. Maybe they like that. And we literally become slaves to them. So may Allah save us from that. That's good. That's good. Okay, as long as they're good, that's fine. Anyone who is not into haram, you know, that's good, alhamdulillah, no matter who they are. And taqwa is to pray even when no one is praying. You know, it is possible that your friends are not Muslims. So of course, they're not going to get up and pray. So how are you going to go and pray? Any idea? Do you ever try that? Like if you have non-Muslim friends and then you have salah time, how do you leave and pray? Okay, good. Very good, Sister Rasha. You're amazing. So you just tell them I have to go. Very nice. Excuse yourself. Beautiful. You just tell them. Very good. Alhamdulillah. I had a friend. She used to tell her friends, her non-Muslim friends, whenever she would have to pray, she would tell them, I have a meeting with my God. So I'm going to be back after the meeting. So that was a cool way of saying that. So inshallah, if you're finding it difficult to leave, to, to get up and pray, you can also, you know, say something cool like that. It's up to you. Very good. That's nice, Sister Amna. That's beautiful. All right. And if it's about texting, you don't even have to tell them, right? That what you're doing, because prayer is something which is between you and Allah. And let's move on. So now our formula to become a muttaqi, right? Four easy steps. First of all, just keep remembering that Allah is watching me. It's going to help you so much at every level and you won't make mistakes. Secondly, desire to stay safe. We should have this desire that, no, I don't want to end up in any problem. I don't want to end up in any punishment. I don't want to end up in hellfire. And this is going to be our biggest motivation to not do anything which is wrong. And then ask yourself, would Allah approve of this, right? Whatever you are about to do. So make it a habit. Like, can you do that? Write it down somewhere near you. Just make it a habit before you do anything, before you say anything, before you eat anything, before you do whatever you do in life, right? Just ask yourself this, and this is going to, inshallah, help you a long way. Inshallah. Okay, very good, Mr. Hamna. That's interesting. And then last but not the least, stay mindful, right? Stay mindful, inshallah. So don't ever become, you know, a person who, who is like lost. I don't know where I am. I don't know what's going on. Don't be like that. Be a smart person, stay mindful where you are, what you're doing, how are you feeling? And, you know, where, you know, how can you make this situation better? So you can mix and match ihsan and taqwa and make your life beautiful, alhamdulillah. So if you think that taqwa is hard, let me tell you, we have already experienced taqwa in your life. How? By fasting. Because when we are fasting, what are we doing? Sometimes we're at school and maybe we don't go to an Islamic school. So there are a lot of non-Muslims around, or maybe there is no one Muslim in my class, or there is no one Muslim around me during the break. So I can easily eat whatever, right? But why don't we eat? We can easily eat whatever. Our parents are not there. Our siblings are not there. No Muslims are around. Or even if some Muslims are around there, they themselves are dodgy, right? They themselves are weird. So we can easily eat. But why don't we eat when we're fasting? Exactly, because we realize that Allah is watching us. Very good, alhamdulillah. So we have already experienced this in fasting. So how about we just use the same technique and use it throughout, not just during fasting, but otherwise as well. Whenever we are talking, don't talk negatively about the third person. Let's say you and me are talking. So don't just say, you know what Aisha said? You know what Hamida said? You know what Hamna said? No, don't do that. 
you need to stick to your own conversation. Don't bring in the third person because the moment you bring in the third person, more likely there will be someone who would say something negative, right? More likely. Not all the time, but more likely. Yes. Oh, that's so sweet, Sister Hamna. That's nice. They don't have to, right? You get more rewards for your more sabr. Alhamdulillah. Yes, he's always watching us. Remember that. And then, of course, we need to ask Allah for taqwa. And alhamdulillah, there is a beautiful dua from Sahih Muslim. How many of you know this dua? Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha wa zakiha. It's a beautiful dua. You can memorize it. Or if it's hard for you, just take a screenshot right now. Can you all take a screenshot? You know how to take a screenshot? Beautiful. Take it and just keep it on your phone or your computer for a week and you will know it. You know, just keep it like as a wallpaper and then you will keep coming back to it and you will know it. How many of you can read Arabic? You can read Arabic? Yes or no? Give me a thumbs up. Very good. Alhamdulillah. That's beautiful. So you don't, you don't need transliteration. That is cool. All right. So what does it mean? Allahumma, O oh Allah, adi, grant nafsi, my soul, taqwaha. It's taqwa. Wa zakiha and purify it. So we're asking Allah to put this mindfulness in us. Put this Allah consciousness in us. And that is so cool. Very good, Brother Omar. Thank you so much. Um, I think you are Brother Umar or some sister from Brother Umar's account, but that's cool. Thank you so much. So um, yes, the way you have given us a dua, this is good for all of us. Allahumma ati nufusina taqwaha. Ameen. Oh, very good, Sister Hamma. Okay, next time, inshallah. So after learning about taqwa, do we all want to implement it in our lives? Let's just do it for this week. Uh, sorry, two more weeks. So let's just try this for two more weeks and then come back with a lot of taqwa next time. Can we do that? And then inshallah, once we do that, we will be able to get our next badge and that is of taqwa. So are you taking notes? At least write down these two terms. Even if you're not taking notes, just write down these two words. So ihsan we have to work on, taqwa we have to work on. Not too hard, right? Even though these concepts are, you know, used a lot. But if you understand them, they're quite simple. They're not too hard. Can we do one more today or you want to do some questions? Because we only have a few minutes left. So we can do the next topic next week. It's up to you. Let me just do a random poll quickly, everyone. So do you want to do the next topic or do you want to chit chat? Next topic, very good, Sister Naima. Okay, very good. Next session will be in after um, will be after two weeks, so fourteen days or so. You're fine with anything? Cool. So we're gonna take Sister Naima's. Um, you okay? Sister Naima is saying next topic, so we're gonna do next topic. So next topic is also from the Quran. Third part of the ayah is Wallahu yuhibbu swabirin. Allah loves the ones who do sabr. Allah loves the ones who are. The transition here is steadfast. Again, Arabic is so beautiful. You cannot put one English word for it and understand the concept. So inshallah, let's understand sabr. But before we move on, let me ask you one thing. When you think of sabr, what do you think of? Does any mind come, does any image come to your mind? Does any image come to your mind? Good, Sister Safa, beautiful. Patience has to do with fasting exactly because you have to do a lot of sabr in fasting that you cannot eat, you should not say anything bad, you should not watch anything you know, useless and you should make the most of your day, cool. But if you think about image, like any, like if you are like me, I usually think of images when I think of concepts. So when you think of sabr, what comes to your mind? What image? Usually people think, Sabr is like when you are sad and alone, isn't it? And you're just bearing it with patience and you're being very good at it. Usually people think it's like a dark and gloomy phase of one's life, isn't it? But what exactly sabr is, it's actually opposite. It's beautiful. It doesn't make you a person who is sad and alone and depressed, right? It is actually different. But usually when, when we are told, do sabr, we take it like, oh my God, I have to be like, you know, sad and gloomy because that's sabr. 
a lot of times this happens. We, this is how we perceive it, but that's not correct. Alhamdulillah. So it's not sabr that you sit like this for, for days and you're doing sabr. No, sabr is different. Sabr actually, if you look at the definition, it has three parts. Sabr has three parts. First of all, sabr, patience, at the time of calamity. Sabr at, at the time of calamity would be whenever anything bad happens, what do you do? you don't react negatively, right? You don't forget about, um, you know, what sabr is. You don't start screaming, you start, don't start yelling, you don't start cursing, rather you hold yourself. That is sabr. For example, let's say someone gets into an accident. Usually when people get into an accident, what comes out of their mouth? Do they say, oh, sugar? No, what do they say? They say something bad. Do they say Alhamdulillah? Hardly anyone, right? Usually they say something bad. Maybe generally or most of the time they have good language, but if they have stored some wrong vocab in their system, it will come out when things go bad, right? So a lot of people, they do that. So we need to remind ourselves that no matter what happens, we will not utter a bad word. And sometimes, like if you think about an um, accident situation, not only just bad words to ourselves, sometimes people come out of their cars and they start fighting, right? They start cursing each other. They start saying bad, bad things to each other. That is also no sabr. Because of course, the damage has been done. Now, no matter how much you scream, it, it won't fix anything. Your cars won't be, you know, they won't go back to normal. There's no undo button by screaming. So why scream? Why make it harsh? Why, why become ugly? Why become rude? Why make it difficult? So just realize that it has happened, accept it, and then try to do it normally. Try to deal with the other party normally. Try to stay calm. And this is sabr, right? And the beautiful hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the patience is at the first stroke of a calamity. Because some people, when you know there's a calamity, they scream and they yell, and when they're tired and drained, they say, oh, I'm doing sabr. Well, it's not sabr. It's just you're drained and you, you don't even have any words left to say you have, you know, you have literally emptied out everything. So this is not sabr. This is too late. Yes, exactly. So don't do that. At the time of calamity, even if something breaks, even if your, uh, you know, sibling spills um, water all over your homework, now you cannot undo it. Just remind yourself that thing. That no matter what happens, even if you smack him, even if you do whatever to your sibling, your homework is not going to come back. So deal with the situation with patience. So at least you get love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Actually, that's the best thing you can get out of it. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you're able to hold yourself. Second uh, part of the definition of sabr is that you hold yourself on the obedience of Allah. So you never stop. You keep doing the right things. You keep whatever good you're doing, keep doing it. Don't say, okay, I'm just going to recite Quran as long as, um, you know, it's break time for me or as long as, uh, you know, I'm home because of homeschooling or because of the virus situation, I cannot go to school. So, okay, I'm going to recite Quran every day. But once everything is back to normal, once school is open, I'm going, just going to stop the obedience of Allah. You don't right? That is sabr. You keep doing the thing, even if you're doing it for only 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, your, your daily Quran connections should stay there no matter where you are, no matter which phase of life you are in, inshallah. So obedience of Allah throughout, even if it's little bit, like, you know, obedience of Allah, of course, at every level, but let's say a little bit of Quran section every day, portion of the Quran every day, your salawat, you know, you don't have to make them long, but do pray on time and do pray beautifully. Whatever you pray, do it beautifully. Again, it's never quantity in our deen. It's more about quality, right? So quality should be beautiful, inshallah. And yes, Ramadan is coming up. So that is going to help you train yourself for becoming more obedient throughout. Also, holding yourself back from the disobedience of Allah. That is also sabr. So it is possible that during Ramadan, we leave a lot of bad things, right? We don't watch TV or we don't use social media. So keep doing that. So if you thought that was the disobedience of Allah, that's why you stopped it in Ramadan. 
try doing that outside Ramadan as well. So keep staying away. Or let's say you don't eat haram. So keep doing that. Stay, keep staying away from haram. Don't say, okay, I have been really good for 10 years. So now it's enough. You know, enough is enough. Now I'm going to try haram. No, don't do that. Because that's no sabr whatsoever. So hold oneself back from disobedience of Allah throughout your life, inshallah. So this is the definition of sabr. All three together. Keep doing the right things. Keep staying away from wrong things. And don't overreact or actually don't react negatively, to be exact, whenever you go through any calamity in life. Okay, let me ask you a few questions. Are breaking rules sabr? Like there are some rules in place, there are some laws, there's some things to do, there's some things not to do. So if you break those rules, is it sabr? No, because when we break rules, what does it show? We don't even have self-control. That's why we want to do everything or whatever we feel like. That's against sabr, very good. And also sabr is to keep secrets. So if your friend tells you something, which is not harming anyone, right? Which is not going to ruin the world, right? Something personal. So keep it because your friend told you to keep it as, keep it as a secret, which is not harmful. Remember that any secret which is harmful for the community, then of course you cannot keep it as a secret, but something which is personal, like maybe she did something, maybe she said something and you know that was bothering her and then she just mentioned that to you. So keep it as a secret, this is sabr. If you're not able to hold it, then it shows that you have no sabr and you have lost that amazing um, you know, way to get the reward from Allah and also his love. Sabr is also to stay pure and chaste no matter what the world is doing, no matter what your other friends are doing, you stay pure, you stay an obedient person. You do the right things. Even if people are involved in haram relationships, haram things, you don't do that. And that is sabr. May Allah grant all of us this type of sabr as well. Ameen. And sabr is to never miss your salah, never miss your prayer, no matter which situation you are in, no matter um, you know, if you're going through some financial crisis or you're failing every course, your, your health is going down, no matter what's happening. Keep doing the right things. That's obedience, right? To so keep doing the right thing. And inshallah, Allah will pull you out of every distress and every problem because that comes in the Quran. So if you want to get help of Allah, what do you need to do? Two things, sabr and salah. So do it together and you will see wonders, inshallah. And sabr is to not comment on others. It's the hardest, isn't it? Like just making a comment, even if they don't hear it. Like, oh, look at her. Oh, look at him. Oh my God, how ugly. Oh, come on, insane. Things like that. Do we keep on saying that? Do we keep saying these things? And you know, when we keep commenting, what happens? What are we doing? Imagine every negative comment, every bad comment, we're actually amassing bad deeds, evil deeds. Even if it's for, you know, randomest of people, even if you're commenting on bad people, why, why do that? Why can't, we, why can't we focus on good things and comment on good things instead of focusing on bad? And not only just with the real tongue we comment, these days because of social media, we comment even more, isn't it? So if we notice that people are liking something or enjoying something, you know, there, there will be, you, would not, you would notice there are some people, they are ruiners, literally, right? So when they see someone enjoying or happy about something, they have to say something negative, isn't it? So they do, you know, they, they would say something to ruin everyone's day. So you should not be that one person who ruins everyone's day. You should not be that one person who comments negatively on other people's uh, walls on Facebook or comment section on Instagram or no, no matter where. Because, you know, sometimes one comment can ruin someone's not just one day, not just one week, entire life as well. Something very demotivating, something very harsh, something very cruel can ruin someone's life. So be very mindful about your comments as well. So again, in order to have sabr, you need mindfulness, taqwa, because you know, because a lot of times, because you know what you're typing and sometimes you hide your identity. A lot of people, they have their fake names. That's also a lie, remember that, all right? Some people have their fake names on social media. And through those fake names, you know, they use the profiles and they just harm each other by, um, you know, commenting nastily or saying really rude stuff. So this is very bad. 
That's, this is against Islamic manners, first of all. And this is against sabr, totally. So may Allah guide us and may, you should not be this person. If you cannot be this person, if you cannot be this person, don't be this person. Stay quiet, it's better. It's better to not say anything than to say something negative, inshallah. And sabr is to not take revenge. So let's say someone posted something bad about you on social media. So what do you do? You don't take revenge. And that is like amazing level of sabr. Amazing level of sabr, alhamdulillah. And then Allah will reward you for that. And you will get respect from people by doing that. Because if you're going to use your mouth to say something negative about that person who said negative about you, you and that person is same then. No one's better. But if you're able to hold your comments, if you're able to forgive that person, you are doing something better, inshallah. So can we all try that? I know it's not that hard. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. Just stay quiet. That's it. Just zip up and stay happy, inshallah. So, okay, now imagine the situation. And with that, we will conclude. How will you do sabr if someone stops you and deals with you, you know, in a harsh manner like this guy and says really dirty stuff, starts saying, you know, weird things, racial slurs and whatnot. What are you going to do? How are you going to react in this situation? Anyone? No idea? Yes idea? Ever happened to you that someone was really nasty to you and you didn't even know what happened? You didn't even know why happened, right? Yes, if you're going to tell them to stop, they're going to do more, right? They become bullies. So yes, very good to a smile and walk away and be polite, very nice. And let's say they don't let you walk away. Then you can just nicely ask, is there anything I can do to help you? Like maybe you are miss, you know, you're, maybe you have some misunderstanding. Maybe you got the wrong person something nice, right? So if you think that person is dealable, but if you think that person you cannot deal with, that person's like a rough and tough, big guy. So, you know, just, it's better to just, you know, smile, walk away and be polite and just run off, right? Inshallah. Exactly. Hopefully they won't. Inshallah, do recite your morning, evening askar. Trust me, no one's going to be harming you. Inshallah. No one's going to pull your hijab off. Just recite your morning, evening adhkar with full conviction that Allah will protect you and Allah will protect you, inshallah. Okay, so sabr is also to listen carefully. And mashallah, all of you have been really uh, great with that. So all of you have been really sabr. Alhamdulillah, may Allah reward you for that. So inshallah, keep listening carefully and may Allah reward you all for that. And sabr is also not to say anything negative, even if you are in pain. Right? Even if you are going through this, don't say anything negative. Right? Alhamdulillah. And sabr is to complete what you have started. So if you have started school, if you have taken any course, if you have um, whatever it is, whatever you start, and if it's good for you, don't stop. Don't quit. Quitters are not sabirin because it requires sabr to keep doing the good thing. It requires sabr to complete what you have started. And there are levels of patience. Again, it depends on who you are, where you are. So you know, we're just going to look at the formula for today before we conclude. So first of all, accept the situation. If you're going through a calamity, first thing we need to do is accept the situation that yes, this is happening. And then look at the brighter side that even if I'm going through this, at least I'm alive, at least this is working. Let's say you get into a car accident, then you can say, Alhamdulillah, at least nothing happened to me, or at least the whole car is good. It's only the dash or it's only the front part or the or the back side or whatnot. So look at the brighter side and be grateful that Alhamdulillah, that not everything is destroyed. Only one or two, it's fine. Even if you break your laptop or you lose your phone, at least you have your family, at least you have, a, you have, have your home, Alhamdulillah. So there's always something to be grateful for. And then take your time. Don't react right away. You don't even have to. You know, sometimes people may um, send you really ugly messages right? So you don't have to respond to them right away. Take your time. Give yourself 24 hours and then respond. Think hard, uh, you know, write a message, reread it, put yourself in that person's position and then, then read it. And then inshallah, when you think it's nice enough, it's good enough, then you can go on with that. So jazakumullah khayn kasira. Thank you so much for your time. So alhamdulillah, we are done for this day and we are going to conclude with this beautiful dua. ربنا أفرغ علينا صبرا وتوفنا مسلمين 
O our Lord, pour out patience on us and cause us to die as Muslims. And may Allah be pleased with all of us. Jazakumullahu khayn kasir everyone. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Very good, Strahamna. You're already very smart. Seems like you have learned a lot already. May Allah reward you immensely. Please keep coming and help others, uh, other students as well with your amazing experiences. And assalamu alaikum. Jazakul khair, Sister Mariam. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Julia. Jazakul khair, that was amazing once again. And um, for anybody who's wondering, the next session is actually going to be on March 24th. And there will be another poster that goes out with that, with the indicated date on it. So um, just keep your eyes out for that. And inshallah, I'll see everybody again on March 24th. Assalamu alaikum.